Steve Kerr called their most complete win of the year. Tonight they have arguably their worst loss of the year. They did not play well in the first quarter. They gave up 40 points down double digits. They came back to tie the game at 55 late in the first half. They were down 60 to 55 with 64 seconds to go. And then Draymond Green got run by young official John Butler. And we're trying to figure out exactly what happened. Coming to studio, we'll sort it out. Welcome to Toyota Warriors post game live. Greg Papa back with you on a night that uh, Draymond Green kind of lost his temper, not as an official so much, but as a teammate. The Hall of Famer Chris Mullen is here. Darrell Wright, you were exactly right what you said on Warriors Halftime Live, that it was not what he said at the official John Butler. It's what he said at John, at the, his teammate, uh, the young James Wiseman. And basically what Draymond said was, uh, come on, man, come on, man, F that, F that, referring to that pass that got swiped by Nerland's Noel. And as they go back, you see Draymond yelling at Wiseman, and Butler tees him up right there. So what's your interpretation of how this went down? Uh, I think, you know, it was just, it was the wrong, wrong call in my opinion. You know, this happens, you know, throughout the course of the season when you're trying to throw the ball in the post and, you know, your guy might not seal him or, you know, it might be a bad pass. So I think it was just the wrong, wrong play, the wrong time. And I think the referee thought he was talking to him. And it looked like Draymond was upset with James Wiseman for not holding off Nerland's Noel. A similar play happened in, in, with the Lakers, where Draymond tried to throw the ball to James Wiseman. He didn't catch it. To me, I was always taught it's always the passes. You know, he's in control of what happens. And if, if the ball is turned over, it's the passer. But yeah, they, he could have held off and been a little more physical. Um, but again, the leadership, how you speak to your teammates, is as important how you speak to the referees. There's got to be some control there. Yeah. You're still trying to teach this incredibly gifted young player who's going to be a superstar, teach him the NBA game. How that happens on a daily basis is important. Marquise Chris immediately chimed in. You know, he's hurt, broken leg, bad ankle, watching at home. And he said he, he wasn't yelling at John Butler, the official. He was yelling at his teammate. But the question is... You know, and he is going to take James Wiseman under his wing and he's going to teach him defensive rotations, how to play in this league. But there's a lot of tact. Uh, you know, some guys would be spicy with their teammates, maybe Kobe Bryant, maybe Michael Jordan behind closed doors. But you got a 19 year old, very impressionable young man trying to do the right thing and to call him out like that. And again, that's not why he got run. He should not have been run. Right. But should he be speaking to his teammates like that in an open gym with microphones around officials and not do it in the closed practice setting uh, you know it's the heat of a moment but it, once again this is a rookie it's a 19 year old rookie that played what three games before it hit the first 15 games so he's learning and a lot of things is going to be you know you have to take patience you know it takes patience to talk to young players I was a 19 year old rookie I wasn't playing as many minutes important minutes as James Wiseman but it is ways that you can you know relate things to your teammates and let them know hey you you need to do this you need to do that so it, it, it's different ways to to you know express your feelings to your teammates I you know at halftime Darrell and I spoke to Tim Hardaway senior he was similar to that he was very outspoken, uh, very competitive, very fiery. Um, but there is a, a, there's, there's a tact, as you said, to how you approach guys. James Wiseman seems like he's a sponge. He wants all the information. And how that's relayed is important. And everyone has their own style, right? Everyone, you got to be true to your personality. Steph is very laid back. Draymond's a fiery, competitive guy. Uh, and that may be their relationship. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Yeah. How do you think this is handled among the coaching staff? Did, does Steve say something to Draymond? Yes, we got it wrong. Maybe we should have a mechanism to challenge this and look at this and go back and listen to the audio. Hey, John Butler, he's not yelling at you. Right. He's yelling at his teammate. But why is he yelling at his teammate? I, I think like that? for sure. Is that something Steve should bring up to Draymond? I'm, I'm with Darrell. I think it was totally the wrong call by the referee. Draymond Green should not have been ejected. Um, yeah, so I think that should be a challenge book call. And I think they could easily go, they go, they have the audio, as you said, they go to the screen, they go to Secaucus. It was just, because uh, we, we had another play where Bullock missed that layup and it was an invert whistle. That's really right. what it was. It was an yeah. invert whistle yeah. and they could have changed it. Yeah. All right, so James Wiseman played on after Draymond got ejected. And we thought, you know, arguably, his best game as a young pro last night against LaMarcus Aldridge. We knew it would be difficult, way more difficult tonight against Mitchell Robinson.
Durrell, but he played well tonight. He went 24-47. He had 15 points. He had eight rebounds, five of nine from the floor, made five of seven from the free throw line. And he was active, and he got a lot of run after Draymond was, was run late in the game. Yeah, I thought it was a good game for him, you know, especially seeing two young, good shot blockers, uh, Norlands Noel, who's known for his defense, and also Mitch Robertson, who's known for his defense. So I thought he did a pretty good job with – you know, holding his own against these guys and going, you know, attacking their bodies like we talked about in pregame and trying to finish over top of them. So I think he had a pretty solid game tonight. Another learning experience after playing against Anthony Davis, Marcus Sol, Lamarcus Aldridge, these two young fellas, as, as Darrell said, Nerlens Noel and uh, Mitchell Robinson, similar to uh, Wiseman yeah. in stature, a very yeah. similar uh, style of play. I thought he did a good job. Every night I watch him. I see a lot of positive. I, I don't. I don't really see the negatives with him. So you lose Draymond Green, and obviously your defense eroded. It wasn't good in the first quarter. It was better in the second quarter. Then in the second half, it fell apart because you don't have Draymond. But he also does so much offensively. Sets the high drag, the screen for Steph. They run the offense through him. So. Steph's role in the second half changed, and they had to bring Nico Mannion in right away to get in their ball handler to get Steph off the ball in the second half, well, minus Draymond. I really thought offensively they were really figuring it out. I thought they were going to you know, win this game going away in the second half because Steph was playing off the ball, as you said, Pop. You know, moving beautifully without the basketball, screening, getting layups, hitting, hitting three-point shots, getting four-point plays. I thought it was just a matter of time. Uh, Draymond was really missed on the defensive end, but he can handle the ball and let all that stuff develop off the ball for Steph. So he was missed as much on the defensive end and, and on offensive end, Darrell. Definitely. You know, I think the offense got a little stagnant once that second half uh, started. And guys, you know, look, were just looking for Steph instead of being aggressive within the offense. And, you know, on the defensive end, you know, he's the, the anchor of the defense. He's the guy that's communicating to the guys, telling guys when to get through the screens and, uh, you know, what's coming. So they, they definitely missed him in that second half. And he wound up with 30 tonight, Molly, and he did make five threes. He took 14. It was five of 14, but that's fine. You know, he had to score. He knew the situation. They had to make up some points here. So he came into the night needing eight to tie your former teammate with the Indiana Pacers, the Hall of Famer Reggie Miller. So now with his five tonight, he's three away. He could get it Saturday against the Utah Jazz. Could. Oh, what's happening? Are you calling it flat out here? <laughs> yeah, but you look at those three guys, three of the greatest shooters of all time. But Steph is so unique because he does it both. He does it off the dribble, off the high pick and roll. And, of course, he moves so well without the ball the way Ray Allen and Reggie Miller did. Um, yeah, he'll get it Saturday night. And uh, You're he, calling it. It's, he, it's a well, lock. He, he's going to get three. He's, he's joined the 2500 club. Soon he's going to have his own club. Like 4K. The, yes. 4K, and, easy. And I don't think anyone's getting invited. No. <laughs> Just Steph. No. It's his own club. Although the way they shoot the three ball, you know, is that a record that Steph can put out there so far? I actually thought Clay Thompson, when it was all said and done, may rival Steph. But these last two years, he's not going to play a single minute due to injury. But the way these guys shoot threes now, is that a record that he could put far enough out there, Darrell, that'll never be broken? Or the way they shoot threes, will somebody get him one day? I think he can. Like Mully said, he does it different ways. It's not just catch and shoot. It's off the dribble. It's off isos. It's off down screen. So he's doing it a hundred different ways. And I don't see too many guys out here that's scoring like that. It's a few guys, the Damian Lillard to the other world. But Steph, he's just doing it a little bit different. The numbers he puts up, uh, they're so staggering because of the efficiency. He's so efficient from the three-point line. Uh, and now this year, he's shooting as, more, as much as he has ever in his career. So the number's going to keep on climbing. Uh, and they need to. They need him to be like that each and every night to give themselves a chance to You know, win. looking ahead to 2055, I wonder if Cannon Curry <laughs> could break <laughs> he's his already, He's already got record. the Euro step. He's there. got the Euro step. <laughs> Kalena was teaching him that the other night. Speaking of Kalena Azubuki, let's head back out to Chase, check in with Bob Fitzgerald. And Kalena, their thoughts on tonight's game, Draymond's ejection, and the game in Salt Lake City on Saturday. Well, the beauty of the NBA is the games come fast and furious and you turn the page and you move on to the next one. And the Utah Jazz are an elite team. So to go to Utah and then you're looking at Donovan Mitchell and Conley Bogdanovich Gobert, this is a veteran team that has a really interesting style because they're the best three-point shooting team, and that's going to be a big challenge. Well, they consider themselves a legit championship contender. That's yep. how they think about themselves, and you think about them offensively. Really good offensive team. They're also a really good defensive team, the three-point shooting. Oh, they man. run a lot of great stuff to get threes. They'll get into the paint. Obviously, Donovan Mitchell puts a ton of pressure on your defense, so that's where your work is going to be cut out for you. If the Warriors look at that game 
it's a Wiseman Gobert grow up game. So mm. you're watching that, but it's also how do you free up Steph because Conley's a good defender, Mitchell's a good defender, and so it's the the Curry action. But I also want to see Wiseman go bare. That's that's 14 feet of basketball player. Yeah, yeah, we may see some of the stuff we saw in the Spurs game last okay, night yeah, where yeah. you're seeing Steph set screens, maybe get downhill off the pick and roll, see if you can get go bare away from the basket, that draw makes him sense, away yeah. from the basket. A double team, Steph will come off of it. And you got four on three if Draymond is going at him. So you got to get a little tricky, a little creative on the offensive side because they're disciplined. They don't beat themselves mm -hmm. on the defensive end. Not a ton of mistakes for this Utah Jazz team. Well, the Warriors have seen contenders. They've played the Clippers well, played the Lakers well. But the Utah Jazz, you know, after that you have the two Minnesota games. But Utah on the road, that is one of the tougher challenges in the league. See if the Warriors bounce back not only offensively but defensively after allowing the Knicks 119. That will be the challenge on Saturday. As played tonight, we'll show you their highlights coming up a little bit later on, Bob. Nico Mannion, Molly, played only eight minutes in his career, brief career coming in as a rookie against Sacramento in a big win. Tonight, because Draymond was out and needed the ball handler before you go to Wanamaker, he played eight more minutes tonight. He had four assists tonight. Fearless competitor. He's a very good athlete, and he competes. Here he is getting into the paint, dropping off his fellow rookie, James Wiseman. I think he's going to be a really good play. He just needs some experience. Got great uh, court vision. Darrell. Yeah, I, I liked him, uh, you know, in college, and I'm happy that he had the opportunity to get in there early. It's always good when a coach just throws you in there. You know, you're not thinking about it, you know, but that lets you know that Coach Kerr and that coaching staff know that he's been working and he's staying ready. So he, he had some good minutes, I think, tonight. All right, speaking of Coach Kerr, we are going to head back to Chase and to hear from Steve. What happened with Draymond Green? Obviously yelling at James Wiseman, not at the official John Buck. Butler, but that flipped the game. The Warriors were down to just five with 64 seconds to go in the half, and they wound up losing, and arguably their most difficult loss of the year. We'll hear